Hi, um, I'm Dexter, I'm the team leader, and I'm going to take you through our presentation. So we're Skin IQ, simplifying skin cancer screening with digital health. And I don't know how many of you remembered the original um, iPod commercial, 1,000 uh, tunes in your pocket. So we have 1 million skin exams in your pocket. Uh, we're talking about melanoma. Melanoma is um, a big problem, as you probably saw from that video. Um, number one killer of young adults. Um, and you would think this is easy to diagnose. It's actually not very easy to diagnose. We have a dermatologist in our team, and she can tell you um, there's poor specificity. It's about 60% of diagnosing melanoma. A fair number of imprecision. Um, 36 biopsies are performed for every melanoma that's confirmed on skin check. Um, and this is sort of the problem. There is no robust um, and objective way to diagnose melanoma. There is um, this A, B, C, D, E method where you subjectively quantify asymmetry, border, color, diameter of skin molds, etc. cetera. Uh, there's another method that was developed, this ugly duckling method where you compare one mold to other molds on your skin to, to subjectively think, uh, to subjectively make a diagnosis. Um, so that's the problem. So 30 biopsies for every one melanoma de detected. That's a fair, fairly high rate of biopsies. Um, so what our original idea is and, 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 and was, was to provide multimodal um, melanoma diagnostics to physicians. So what does multimodal mean? So we, we thought originally we would have a smartphone app uh, to digitally triage patients. So this app would predict if a mole is cancerous or, or not. Uh, but beyond that, we would have some kind of molecular diagnostic. Um, and that molecular diagnostic would be non-invasive and a secondary add-on to this app uh, to confirm the diagnosis. We originally, um, my laboratory, I'm faculty here at UCSF, and my laboratory is in big data. So uh, this deep learning was the technology we thought we would leverage for both of these aims. Uh, deep learning is, um, is being demonstrated to outperform humans in image classification. So here's an example of a task to classify one million images into 1,000 categories. Deep learning is the technology came on the scene in 2012, and it's outperformed the rest as far as accuracy rates. So right now, using deep learning, we can achieve 3.5% error rates, which is better than a human for classifying general objects. Um, so our, our idea was to take this new technology, deep learning, um, as I said, I'm, uh, I'm um, a PI in a big data laboratory. Uh, Maria, uh, she runs the melanoma clinic, and she's the PI in a, a wet laboratory, so to speak, developing molecular diagnostics. Um, Evashek is an uh, undergrad CS honor student, uh, technology development. Um, and Malika is a fellow, she works at Genentech, um, and she was helping us with the operations and developing our ideas. Um, so as most other people presented in the beginning, in the beginning we, we really, we thought we were going to build this app, we thought we were going to have this molecular diagnostic, we thought everybody would love it, um, and we soon found out, um, you know, this was our original um, Lean Launchpad, uh, the, the canvas, the business canvas, um, and as we went on this journey, we, we started to ask the hard questions. Uh, we got out the building. We, we talked to a lot of dermatologists, and dermatologists, um, there, there, there are many different types with many different um, value propositions versus academia, versus private practice, whether they're in managed care. So we, the bulk of our interviews focused on um, dermatologists, which would be our, um, our clients. We also talked to other doctors we thought would be interested. We thought pediatricians, MPs, patients, uh, we talked to executives in the tech industry. And this is the kind of responses, our aha moment, so to speak. Uh, a private practice dermatologist would pay a lot of money for an accurate um, classification for melanoma. Um, some people, we talked to dermatologists at L'Oreal that thought this would be a perfect opportunity for, for Telederm, forget the mobile app. Um, uh, Kaiser thought this could save them millions. If 30, 30 biopsies for every one melanoma detected, that's a lot of money wasted. Um, and uh, some um, academic derms thought they would never use an app like that because um, um, it would slow them down. Some private practice internists, it would slow them down. They refer to dermatologists anyway. That's, it's not going to change their income stream. Uh, so, you know, after uh, talking to many of these people, we realized that, that, um, that one, as a small team, we couldn't operate on two independent products. 
uh, this multimodal idea, yes, it was academically interesting, but there's no way um, we can execute that in any uh, short period of time. So we eventually dropped this, this multimodal approach, which was, which was, we actually won money from UCSF to pursue a multimodal approach, except the business community doesn't care. <laughs> uh, so what we did is we dropped it. We just focused on the digital product. Um, uh, because we could execute on that. We focused on dermatologists as opposed to internists because Maria is a dermatologist and these are her peers, they will use it. Um, uh, we focused on insurance companies, they're the ones that would win if we were to reduce the biopsy rate. Um, um, and at the same time we could replace biopsies that Maria lost with another test that she can bill for, so to speak, with a telederm um, billing code. We didn't know there was such a thing as a telederm billing code. Uh, so the long and short is um, we cut a lot of our um, we cut a lot of our um, um, customer segments down, we refined our value propositions, um, we refined the entire, um, uh, the entire idea, um, over 60 interviews total. Um, so we validated, um, focused, we focused our product, you know, we, we refined, we, we pivoted away from molecular diagnostics toward the, the, digital, um, uh, the digital health space. Um, we refined our customer segment. Dermatologists and insurance companies are primarily who we're going to um, uh, be, be targeting in the future. We refined our value propositions uh, uh, very clearly, not necessarily for better diagnostics, but to save money, not only for better diagnostics, but to save money for the payers, i.e. the insurance companies. Um, and we narrowed our partners down. We did not need to go target every internist um, in America. Uh, we need to help with building the app and sort of promoting the app, and we need to target dermatologists uh, and get it FDA approved. Um, uh, we had various, uh, we, we learned what the customer, customer pains were, um, and we enumerated that for insurance companies and dermatologists, and we obviously learned what uh, our customers would gain for, again, focused in on our customer segments, i.e. insurance companies and dermatologists. Uh, so, so in the end, this is what we ended up with. Um, uh, our, our business model canvas is much simpler, as you can see. It's much more manageable, something uh, that is uh, tractable. Uh, we came up with this idea how we would get reimbursed from both insurance companies um, and uh, dermatologists. Um, and we think uh, the, the future is bright. We have a proof of concept, as you've seen in our, our little video there. And uh, we, are, we, we are definitely a go. Uh, thank you.